Hi, I'm Sevilla with Impossible Life Stories, where we bring you stories of real life miracles and God encounters that will bring you hope and encouragement, no matter what circumstances you're facing. If you can have a tiny seed of hope, that can grow into faith. And we all know that faith moves mountains. So your breakthrough is possible, your miracle is coming, and your God encounter is right here. Welcome to Impossible Life Stories. Hi, this is Chris and Courtney Jacobs. And today we're going to talk about their son, that they had an impossible life story for sure. Um, the doctors had told them that their son would not come home from the hospital, that he was not going to make it through the night. And so we're going to talk to them and hopefully get some insight on how what happened and how they overcame their impossible life story. Thanks for yeah. having us. Oh, yeah. absolutely. This is my pleasure. I'm honored. So when did you notice that he started getting sick? Oh, goodness. Um, it was on a Sunday, and we were getting ready for church. And he came out, and he said, I just feel really weak, Mom, and he's 12 years old. And so, you know, I like it. I couldn't wait till my kids got to age to tell me, like, what their ailments were <laughs> instead of guessing. So I was just going to do a simple breakfast, but I was like, well, let me get you cookie eggs and stuff. You just need, like, some real food. And um, so we went to church, and then while he was in his Sunday school class, they came out and got Chris because he was now fevered, and his groin hurt really, really bad. And um, he, he does a lot of backflips and back handsprings, and he always pulls his groin. And so I'm like, babe, you did like 100 backflips yesterday, and you, you're just fighting off a little something, like maybe a cold or the flu or something. And so when we went home after church, we, we really thought that that's what we were dealing with, like a fever and a pulled groin. That's what we thought. And he's 12 years old. 12, yep. And then when did he start getting, when did the fever start getting higher? And how did you know to take him in? So that night, um, it was kind of progressively, he just wasn't acting like himself. His color wasn't really the best. And I he told was so tired. He was so, oh. so tired. And his, and his leg hurt so bad. He was like with a severe limp now, this groin. And I'm like, wow. And, and his body hurt so bad. Yeah. I think when we knew it was, he's not a crier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like he gets hurt. He doesn't cry unless it's something real. Yeah. yeah. He started to cry because he, he hurt so bad. Oh. That's so you knew he was at a level 10. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because we had tried to go to sleep, and I told Chris, I'm just going to sleep in his bedroom with him because it just, I just knew something yeah. was off. Mm -hmm. And it was an hour later he woke up and he was crying. And I was like, we need to go to the emergency right now. Like, we lived in Colorado. And we were on top of a mountain, and then Colorado Springs was about 45 minutes down here. Oh. So there was a little tiny emergency room on the top of the mountain, mm -hmm. and we took him to that. And they did all these CAT scans, not all these, one CAT scan, right. <laughs> and because uh, I thought it might be his appendix, because it was yeah. on his right side, and it's his yeah. groin hurting, and... And they came back and they said, there's nothing wrong. We can't find anything wrong with his organs. Oh. Um, everything's fine. Um, just take him home. And if the pain gets worse, mm -hmm. take him to Colorado Springs Children's Hospital. So um, we took him home. So Sunday night, I mean, Sunday morning is when he started getting sick. In the middle of the like night on Sunday nights when we took him to that little so, emergency room. So it would be like room. early Monday morning. Right. So then Monday morning, we get home from that around like 5 or 6 a.m. He goes to bed wakes up two hours later and we like we knew in our spirits when he walked down that hallway we knew mm -hmm. we got to get in there now and he wasn't just walking he's he's in pain oh i mean just slow just, and his limping, color and, very yeah. nursing this side and he was, his eyes were kind of rolling in the back of his head a little bit um when i would talk to him and so we actually ended up leaving our daughter home alone and um, we told her, like, hey, girlfriend, you just worship, you know, like, what yeah. Cash is going to be healed. We're going to find out what's wrong with him. He's going to be all right. <laughs> so we go down the mountain. Called a friend. Called a friend to come get her. We go down the mountain. And and I think we both felt the urgency in our spirit, which mm -hmm. is so important for anybody listening. Um, you never want to have the kind of faith that gets dangerous. Like, no, 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 Jesus died on the cross. You're healed. And we, oh. it's relationship. you got to be spirit-led. Mm hmm and we were both spirit-led and felt the Holy Spirit telling us, take him now. And so wow. we were like, okay, you, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. um, we've heard some horror some stories. Some people think that faith is not going. 
Yeah. Right. Not yeah, and you hospital. hear that all the time. Don't go to the hospital. I have faith for that. Ooh. You have to be led. Yeah. You know, it's like finding out that you're allergic to a bee sting. Um, when you get stung and you're allergic, there's a reaction to where you, you know, your throat starts to swell shut. Mm. And then you're going to go. And then right. you know that you're allergic. Right. So they give you an EpiPen or whatever. You can carry it with you. You get stung. You hit yourself. You know you're going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Keep it open. Poison leaves. You're fine. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that, well, I got stung by a bee. And if if they don't see, like, death or feel like they're going to die, mm -hmm. well, I'll just keep my faith on it. Well, what is faith? If you don't see results, you know... If you don't feel your, if you feel like you can't breathe because you just got stung, and you're like, well, I'm just, I'll just wait it out. Yeah. That's not faith. That's stupidity. <laughs> I love the clarity on that yeah. because people do that, or they hear a story like this and then they feel condemned if they go to the hospital. Yeah. Right. And or that's not that where we're going with to do this. It the same exact way. Yeah. Like, okay, well, what did they do? What did they? You got to check inside. Yeah. Because yeah. the Holy Spirit knows what you need to do in these moments. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, it's funny because fast forwarding all the way to the end of this, our son began to prophesy that the Lord had put together a dream team of doctors and nurses, and the wisdom that they had in the hospital came huh. from heaven, Not from the way. Lord to the... Yeah, yeah he is prophesying. Our 12-year-old is prophesying to us how the Lord put that team together and was waiting <laughs> for us. Now, if we just said, like, no, we're not going to the hospital, we're just standing mm -hmm. on the word, yeah. the dream team that the Lord had for us, we would have never made it to that dream team. Yeah. Well, and put it ahead, too, that not only was this for cash, but look at the doctor's lives and the nurse's lives and then their family's lives that were touched by this. Yes. That would have never happened That's had right. you stayed home. That's right. That's so right. he always has a bigger plan. That's why it's so important to, like Just you said, hear the Holy Spirit. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it's relationship. So we got there. Did you want to say something? Um, go ahead. No. Okay. So we got there um, to the emergency room, and we're thinking like, oh, they're just going to see like, oh, it's this, and we'll give him a little bit of medicine, mm -hmm. and we're on our way home. Um, it didn't happen like that. He got ultrasound after ultrasound, CAT scans, um, x-rays, and they're doing all these tests all got, through Monday. He got an MRI, which actually discovered a uh, four inch blood clot mm. on the top of his his leg yeah, yeah. yeah on the top of his thigh yeah it's so there was inch. there yeah. was that was a part of it too yeah so that wasn't why he got sick though that was because his fever was so high or was that why he what well, happened was um he had an injury inside mm -hmm. his groin he at some point he stretched overstretched tore yeah his growing muscle and so his as his growing muscle was trying to heal you know kids they do heal quickly but he's just non-stop mm -hmm. you know doing flips and stuff like she said and both of our kids are really athletic and they're like little gymnasts mm -hmm. so that's what they do well he had hurt that a while back he complained about it for a little bit and um I told him, hey, you, you got to take it easy. You know, just let that heal up or whatever. You probably mm -hmm. just overstretched it, whatever. Yeah. Well, when, so what happened was some sort of a staph infection. Oh, okay. In his got into his body. Okay. And with staph, like, I don't know if people realize this or not, but we touch it all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all over. Mm -hmm. But our bodies reject it. Now, if your immune system's weak or that staph infection goes through your body and can find a weakness, which is what happened, it found that torn muscle mm. and it started to... Um, Knit a sweater. Yeah. Just, it started <laughs> yeah. to just, oh, we can hang out here because it's there's an injury right. here. So because it, he was wounded inside, um, that's where it set up camp. Okay. So there, from there, it starts to affect the blood, mm -hmm. and then it goes throughout the whole body. And oh. his blood, I'll let her tell the story about the blood because she knows all the technical uh, terms of it. But that's really how it started was mm -hmm. an injury that hadn't healed up. Normal stuff that our body would just take in, kick out, mm -hmm. it found a weakness 
and that's what started developing. We, that's yeah. what we learned later on. And then that it, it found another spot in one of his um, arteries or veins mm-hmm. in his leg. And so it started to do this. It started um. to extend. And it, and it started to clot there. Mm-hmm. The blood started to clot there. But I'll let you explain the, the okay. DIC stuff and why it clots. So we... we so, okay, so I'll do a quick rundown. Sunday, he's sick. Monday, we have all these tests. Tuesday morning, we finally get that MRI that shows that blood clot and that there's some sort of an infection. Leading up to when we finally got some kind of an answer and saw that blood clot in the MRI, his fever was at 107. Mm. And so <laughs> it, like it had gotten... Hallucinating. It, it was so oh. bad. And Chris is like... Help, help him. Give him some kind of medicine because mm-hmm. he's like losing. We knew that this is not, it's not good. And um, let me not, share a human side real quick. Yes. Um. Because when people tell stories, you can hear the, you know, the miraculous faith. Mm-hmm. You can hear the standing on the word. You can hear, hey, this, is, and we're getting to the part where we stood on the word, and we did the whole time. But there were moments where human emotion, mm. where, um, and this is where it's very vital and important who your inner circle is, who you can reach out to mm-hmm. that's not going to coddle uh, the <laughs> natural, mm-hmm. but remind you of how healed your son is. Like, a friend, a pastor friend, um, I called him. He, he said, hey, man, you start to feel a little bit, you know, overwhelmed or whatever, just call me. Mm-hmm. And uh, tell me to remind you how healed your son is. And as we were doing shifts mm-hmm. up in the mountain, you know, back and forth to the hospital, back up to the house, taking care of our daughter. This was during COVID. This was 2020. Oh, no. So she couldn't come. Mm-hmm. So we had friends helping. We, we only had about three couples that we told yeah. They were standing in faith with us. And the reason why we did that was because you don't want people even speaking out. Mm-hmm. Oh, poor such and such. That That's not what the Bible tells us that's to do. Right. He, he says, wow. remember when Jairus' daughter actually died on mm-hmm. his way? And they came to give Jairus, the father of a 12-year-old girl, the news that his daughter died just actually died when the man of faith the man who does miracles jesus Mm -hmm. god is on his way to heal your daughter and you believe you know that as soon as he gets there your daughter's gonna be fine but you know moving through the woman with the issue of Mm -hmm. blood so it's like he he could have gone to so many he could have got upset he could have got offended he could have been like why she had to interrupt we could have been there Mm -hmm. when did this happen he said, don't trouble the master. Don't trouble the teacher any longer. She's already gone. And Jesus, if you break down what happens there, he ignores. It's, he, he, he's, he acts, when you ignore something, you act like it's not there. Mm-hmm. He is actually, the, the picture that's painted there through the Greek is that Jesus ignores what they say. He turns to Jairus and he says, don't, don't fear. Only believe. <laughs> so you, you got to have Jesus friends mm-hmm. that when news comes, like, hey, he's 50-50 right now at this point because that's what we heard. Mm-hmm. She'll explain that DIC, where the blood and everything, but when you hear that, you got to have people that aren't, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, yeah. you, you know, God, he's, he's going to move. No, 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 no. He already moves. Don't fear only believe. What do you believe? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's not um, what comes out of you is only from a place to what goes in you. Mm-hmm. So if you're not putting this in you, That's right. what comes out of you, Jesus said, it's, what, it's not what goes into a man that defiles mm-hmm. him. It's what comes out of him. Wow. That's so really good. That goes with death and life is in the power of the tongue. That's mm-hmm. a spiritual principle. Mm-hmm. You can speak death or you can speak life. But if you love that principle, you're going to eat the fruit thereby. Meaning, whatever you speak, be 
because it is a spiritual principle, it's a spiritual law. Mm -hmm. This is why people in the world that don't even have a relationship with Jesus are successful. They're speaking it. Yeah. They're putting in self-help stuff. Mm -hmm. It does help. Yeah. They're just not giving God glory for it. But guess what? They will someday. Mm -hmm. And hopefully on this side of eternity. Right. Because if you, the only way to the Father is by confessing that Jesus took your place. Now, the human side of that, like you were saying, when you were in the hospital, both of you, like, how did you, it, was there times when you did break down and cry? Or did you only stay, like, stoic and this is going to happen? Never like, in front of, never in the room. Right. Never in front of cash. Yeah. Um, for me, driving up the mountain, I had a few moments. Yeah. But I called. Okay. You called. I called that friend and he said, hey. Hey, hey, no, no, no. <laughs> We're not going I, there. <laughs> I understand, man, but mm -hmm. your son is so healed. Mm -hmm. And he started to rattle off the scriptures just... Yeah. There, there, there's no distance in spirit. Right, right. So we were two together. Mm -hmm. He was uh, in the likeness of mine, the likeness of faith with me. That's why I could put that draw. There's an anointing from his words. Why? Mm -hmm. Not because it's his words. It's because of the words that are coming out of him that was deposited in him, which is spiritual life. This book is, is life. Mm -hmm. So when you put the book in you, you're putting life in you, what comes out of you is life. Then when the fire came, you had something to, yes. to speak. Yes. You had the foundation yes. was firmly built. So just because you have emotions and you see something and you start to think, oh my goodness. Jesus did not look over at Jairus and think like, is he going to do the right thing? Mm -hmm. Is he going to keep staying the faith? No, no, no. Jesus knew, I'm walking with a man right now who just found out that his 12-year-old daughter is dead and was expecting me to go do what I know is gonna, already going to happen because mm -hmm. Jesus didn't go do anything unless he heard it the, mm -hmm. and saw it from the Father. Mm -hmm. So we already know that the very fact that he was going there, he was going to make her well. That's really good. Otherwise, he wouldn't have went. He would have mm -hmm. just been like, uh, I'm not going to go do that. Yeah. Right. And that's then, good. yeah, that's really good. For me, on a mother's side of it, um, you know, I think it was probably on two, on Monday night when I had to go back up with London. Actually, after Monday night, I don't think I was home very much after that, but Chris had called me and said, you know, his fever's at 107, and I could tell that he was like, oh my gosh, this is, Serious. Very serious. Something's going on that's mm -hmm. serious. And he said, Courtney, I have to tell you something. Like, I believe that this is an attack on Cash's life. And he had told me something that had happened to him a couple months ago where he felt like they're like like he knew it was almost coming, like mm -hmm. spiritually. And when he told me that, I remember standing in my bedroom and um I remember all the furniture just circling, circling, because I knew he was correct. Mm -hmm. I knew that it was more that um mm -hmm. that this was an attack on our son. And um, I remember running to the bathroom, and my head is in the toilet, and I'm dry heaving. But I am saying, as I'm dry heaving, my son will live and not die. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Thank you for mm -hmm. the blood that was shed that my son is coming home. And I just forced myself, because our imagination is so powerful. And I think in that moment, mm -hmm. I could have seen me at Cash's funeral. Mm -hmm. But I chose to see me putting him in the car and bringing him back up that mountain. And I said from that moment on, my son will live and not die and my son's coming home with me. Mm -hmm. So when he called me Tuesday morning and said, they took an MRI, they found this blood clot and um, you need to get down here. They have some kind of news for us. So uh, zoom down the mountain, just praising God. I was praising God the whole morning because it, it actually says, put on a garment of praise. Mm -hmm. And so that would be like, if, if you're cold, you actually have to go put on a jacket or put on a blanket. You put it on. Mm -hmm. And it was the hardest thing in the world for me to do it through tears and through. But I was so disciplined that I would not let anything come out of my mouth mm -hmm. that was that was death. Wow. Like, oh my gosh, Lord, why is this happening? Mm -hmm. what? No, 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 no. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus, you came to give my son life. Yeah. My son will be healed. My son's coming home. So uh, one of my girlfriends had wrote a song, put on a garment of praise, glorify the Lord. And in the midnight hour, chains will break mm -hmm. and we'll see our victory. And so I'm singing this song and I'm getting it in my heart. And it's almost the best way I can describe it is like priming a pump. And then yeah. all of a sudden, 
this hope starts to come and you're like, we're doing this. We're going to see the greatest miracle we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. So get down to the hospital and the doctor comes in and he says, this is what we found in the MRI. There's a four to five inch blood clot on his groin and uh, on, I, his leg. on his leg, um, like right below his groin, right? That, that right, right, right here. And um, he said, we could either rush him to Denver and do a bone culture or pray that I pick the right medicine, the right antibiotic. Mm -mm. Well, this is another moment where you are, you have relationship, you mm -hmm. are spirit led. It was so relationship with the Holy Spirit every step of the way to this miracle and knowing the voice of the Lord, being yes. led by peace. Yeah. So we, um, we both felt in our heart, Lord, you are faithful. We have peace with staying here. We had felt like we had run out of time because he's already fighting 107 this fever mm -hmm. and this antibiotic we know it's what if we get the right one it's what he needs to bring down this fever and so we gathered together with cash and we said lord we thank you for leading the doctor to the right antibiotic for his body and they got it the doctor said okay i'm going to go grab it and within hours his fever started to come down so we knew this was the right one. Mm -hmm. It's fighting the right thing. The doctor had thought it was this certain type of staph infection. He grabbed the perfect antibiotic that Cash needed. And um, from then on, it was just like, it, it was go time. Um, I kind of felt like we were in the clear in that moment. I had not ate since Sunday. I lost 13 pounds in eight days because I, I couldn't eat. Mm -hmm. um, going back to having the right friends. Um, I knew that it was so vital. I didn't want to put it on social media mm -hmm. because I didn't want anybody to look at Cash or look at our situation and say out of their mouth, Cash is sick in the hospital. Mm -hmm. I didn't even want that to come out of anybody's That's mouth. That's good. All I wanted is for people to say, Cash is going to live and not die. Mm -hmm. That hospital is going to see the greatest miracle. So that's the friends, the inner circle that we kept. Mm -hmm. People that I knew just um, guarded their words with their life because they knew how powerful they were. So I call my girlfriend and I let her know that I, I'm having trouble eating. I had lost so much weight. I was just getting so physically tired because I wasn't feeding myself. I couldn't. And um, I called my girlfriend and she said, Faith eats. She gave me a plan. This is so cool because if she would have just been like, Faith eats, just go get something. I didn't even have the brain capacity to know where food was or what mm -hmm. I could eat or what I should mm -hmm. eat. So she gives me the restaurant. She gives me what to order. And she says, take it back to the hospital room. And with every bite, say, I thank you, Lord, that faith eats because I know my son is healed and coming home with me. And I did it. And I had to choke that thing down <laughs> because your, your flesh wants to fight your spirit the whole time. Mm -hmm. But your spirit's stronger. And I think that that's what we really, you know, figured out through this whole thing. But, um... Anyways, I so we we get this medicine in cash. His fever comes down, and he had just mentioned to me, "I'm having a hard time breathing." Well, the doctor heard that, and um, so she's like, "Hey, I just want to take, I just want to X-ray his lungs, just make sure everything's okay." And and I'm thinking everything's fine. You know, we're on the upswing. Mm -hmm. um, it was very opposite of the upswing. So, did you want to say something? Yeah, I want to take a teaching moment because we keep talking about. Um... <clears throat> being led, mm -hmm. you know, being led by, by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit. Um, and a lot of people don't know what that looks like. Being led by the Spirit, what does that mean? It's very, very simple. Um, it's peace. He's, Jesus said, I'm giving you my peace. Mm -hmm. So, being led by the Spirit, it's having peace. And a lot of people think, well, I'm not being led with peace. Okay, let's flip that coin. If you don't have peace, then you're not being led by the Spirit to do that. Right. So it's like, well, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Mm -hmm. I don't have peace to do that. Well, then he's not leading you that way then. Right, then don't, then don't do it. And a lot, right. of people, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people will listen to others, and there comes pressure, and they're led by pressure, right. and not realizing... I don't have peace, therefore mm -hmm. this is not the wisdom from the Holy Spirit. Because when He brings wisdom, it's peace. Because mm -hmm. yeah. it comes from the Lord. Yeah. So yeah. just real quick for anybody that's listening, how you're led by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, it, it's, He leads you with peace. And if you don't have peace, that's not where He's leading you. And sometimes you just have to take a time out and just say, okay, I don't have peace doing that. 
where do I have peace? Mm -hmm. Everybody's saying I should do this. Well, this is where the Holy Spirit will make you look like a genius, and then you can glorify God for it later. Yeah. <laughs> it's where you're like, well, yeah. how did you know to do that? Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't have peace with that, mm -hmm. but the Lord gave me peace to do that. Mm -hmm. right. So I can't take credit for it, but I will glorify Him. Yes, that's so really that, good. So that, that is just in a short clip of how we're led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. It was about having peace or not having peace. And as she's talking about, we, we had a choice to go to Denver or not. That's mm -hmm. what she was getting into. We had to be led by the Spirit. So it just felt more peaceful to stay there and pray that the doctor chooses the right medicine. So you knew that was yeah. Holy Spirit telling you. Like, to I was that. grieved thinking about going to Denver. Yes. Oh, so well, there you go. Thought, yeah. When we thought about like, going to Denver, yes. he was like, oh, that oh, just, no. I, that doesn't feel yeah. right. Like, no, no, no. We'll be okay to stay here. Mm -hmm. My peace is stay here. Get the medicine going right now. Mm -hmm. Right. And just pray that he picks the right one. Yeah. And I do want to say that we included cash with everything that we were doing. Yeah. Every decision, every prayer that we prayed, we had taken scriptures of um, healing, like verses and stuff, and wrote them on white paper and plastered them in front of his hospital bed. And he would be, you know, cash... He, he went through some stuff in the hospital. Oh, yeah. It wasn't a walk in the park. He had to get blood thinner shots in his stomach, which that really, really hurts. And and so he would be like, um, you know, kind of freaking out because that's coming. It was twice a day. And and so I would just say, read that scripture. Read it in front of you. And we would say things like, God has not given us a spirit mm -hmm. of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. And, um, and so anyways, up until this moment that I'm going to tell you about, uh, every single nurse, every doctor that came in, uh, we would let them know as soon as they entered the room, we are Christians. We believe that Jesus died on the cross, and uh, we, we know that the healing power of God is working in our son's body. We're so thankful for you. We're so thankful how you're helping us. And, mm -hmm. and um, so that doctor heard Cash say, like, I'm having a hard time breathing. This is after we've got the medicine in him. This is after his fever's coming down, and we're thinking we're on the upswing. And uh, so I'm sitting in the hospital room, and the, the, there's five doctors on this case, like infectious blood disease, bone doctor, just a normal pediatrician. There's five different doctors on his case. And um, this particular one came in, and she looked at me, and she gave me that look of like, like just, it's not good. And I oh. was like, what? Like, are you kidding me? We've been through so much already. What could possibly be wrong? And she said... Um, and this was after we started the antibiotic. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. She said, um, Cash's blood is going into DIC. DIC is disassembled intervascular coagulation. He had already had that five-inch blood clot on his leg. Because his fever was so high at that 107 before they could find what was wrong, his blood freaked out, and now it was clotting all over his body. He had hardened blood in his lungs. His kidneys were failing. His urine was like almost black. And um, she said, basically, if Cash's vitals crash, if they start to go down, she's like, it's what's happening is all of his blood is clotting and can't flow through his heart, through his organs. He's dying. The reason why I did that is because of the infection, the body goes to an extreme. Mm -hmm. And it thinks like what it was what it was doing to the infection, mm -hmm. which I don't really understand all of that part of it, but it was clotting that up to fight it, but it started to think my whole body's under attack. Right. So then it was going to different parts oh. and it was, it, it was being extreme. Mm -hmm. right. So that's what was happening. It was started to clot other places right. for no reason. Right. So, um, she gave us her report. She said, the ICU knows Cash's name. I've talked to the ICU doctor. His vitals have to stay high throughout the night. Um, and I knew what she was telling me. Mm -hmm. It was 50-50. It was this was Wednesday night. This was Wednesday night. Thursday morning. Yep. And um, I just looked at her and I said, thank you so much for your report. Which was now, Thanksgiving Day, by the way. Yeah, that was Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I said, thank you so much for your report. Now let me tell you what's going to happen. And I said, because Jesus died on the cross and that blood was shed, my son will be healed and we're not going to ICU. You can call the doctor and tell him we're not coming tonight. His vitals will stay strong and you will see the goodness of God in my son's body. You'll see it. She was like a grizzly bear. Yeah, I have chills. I, <laughs> that is really good. It, yeah. was, it was this mama bear saying like, um, 
I've given my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I know that my God does not lie. Yeah. And, um, and she just looked at me and said, I really hope that happens. Um, we were both there together at this point. At this point, we were both together. And it was probably like 10 or 15 minutes later, the nurses came in and they needed to get a blood sample from him. And um, this was probably around what? 6.30. I don't even know what time it was. It was about 6.30 in the evening. I'm not good with days or times. It was like all a whirlwind to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they're trying to get a blood sample and it would not come out. Um, because his blood was clotting everywhere. It was so fast. So I was sitting right next to him on this side. Courtney was on this side. They got this arm on his right side. And, you know, they, they'll put the, the needle in and then they'll put that tube in. Mm -hmm. and the blood will flow into it. And yeah. And they'll put another one on or whatever. So they put that first one on and I'm sitting there. And you saw a little bit come out and it's, it, it was... Dry, clotting or drying as fast. It was like a clot. Like it wouldn't move. Yeah. Not only that, the color of it was not right. I was like... What color was it? It was more of like an orangish Orange type of... black. Like an orangish mm -hmm. uh, type of color. Not like that reddish wine red or dark wine red mm -hmm. color when you have a vial of blood. It, it was like a rusty almost color. Mm-hmm. And I, oh. so like, I see that and she's like, and the nurses are like, whispering you know, they're each moving other. Yeah. the thing around like, and I'm like, no, you definitely got a vein. It's just, it's clotting. Mm -hmm. And I spoke, I didn't speak loud, but I spoke out loud under my breath and touched his arm and, and just spoke to his body to release the blood. And it did. It, it started to trickle out, and then they got a sample. They didn't get a ton, but they got what they needed. And I had to take my natural mind out of that moment. Mm -hmm. Because in the natural, if I would have focused on the natural, again, it's like Jesus telling Jairus, we've already Jesus heard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You heard, She's, your daughter's gone. I'm looking at it like, his body's not working. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not working. But Jesus is. Don't, don't be afraid of that. Only believe. Mm -hmm. So I had to remove the natural, visual, all of that, and just keep in faith. Yes. Just keep in faith. Yeah. Wow. How do you do that? I don't know. You just... <clears throat> You just, <laughs> you just say, Lord, fight. I thank you that you're moving. Yeah. I thank you that you're it moving. It says, you just, fight the good fight of faith. You're fighting your flesh down. There's yes. a fact You're not fighting and there's truth. And the fact is, yeah, his body's freaking out. That's good. But the truth is, Jesus died on the cross. I don't care what it looks yeah. like. And that supersedes mm -hmm. facts. And that supersedes. The truth, truth supersedes, supersedes facts. facts. Yes. And so um, I think we knew in our heart something was something was going on. So um, the nurse, uh, they're, they're all kind of whispering to each other and talking about how his blood doesn't look right and... All of a sudden, I don't even know like really what had happened. It was just kind of all in this moment together. After we get the blood and everything, and the nurses leave. And they told us about the on-call. Yeah. Um, we were praying in the Holy Spirit, and Cash... Was praying, too. He was. He was praying in no. the Holy Spirit, too. He was. But all of a sudden, he just started crashing. And I mean, he went from high 90s to 80s to 70s. So now we're standing up, praying in the Holy Spirit, and Cash had his eyes shut, and he you could just see his mouth moving mm -hmm. like he was praying in the Holy Spirit with us. So he never like lost consciousness or anything like that. He was very peaceful, but he's declining rapidly. Mm -hmm. And um, we knew that like he was dying. Mm -hmm. And um, it was like 80s, 70s, 60s, 50s, 40s, 30s and when it got to 20 we're standing here praying in the holy spirit and now and like all these things are dinging and stuff and out of and i can't even tell you where where this came from but out of the depths of my being i sang out i raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies and we started singing i raise a hallelujah my son is coming home with me mm -hmm. 
And we just started worshiping. And as we started worshiping, he started slowly climbing. And everybody busts in. And all the nurses buzzed in. I mean, they have the cell phone, the ICU, they got all this stuff, and he's coming up, coming up. And we're just like praising. And so <laughs> we're so, just worshiping. So she's at the foot of the bed. I'm up by his head. And I think I'm standing. We are praying in the spirit. And I'm watching Cash the whole time. Like, I don't take my eyes off him. In the midst of hearing all of that, mm -hmm. she's praying and singing in the spirit. I'm praying in tongues, praying in the spirit. I look at Cash, his eyes are closed, and he's peaceful, but almost like a business type look on his face. And he, I just see his mouth moving in here just a little bit as he's praying there in, um, in tongues. So I'm watching it, and he just has this disposition. And when she belted that out, when it was like everything uh -huh. haywire, I mean, it, it felt like an earthquake. Uh -huh. Like what she just saying here was what she's saying there, but it was much louder. And it felt like it shook the whole hospital. Uh -huh. Like it, it went through me and past me. It was like a wave of just boom. Um, it broke through. It was a breakthrough. Uh -huh. It was like enough's enough. And everybody else's story looks different. Courtney's a worship leader. You know, part of her gift is one of the gifts that and anointings that she carries is to sing, mm -hmm. worship, and praise. And she belted that out, and it was like just a wave of heaven. Just like, it, it, like you ever see like in a movie or something, like a sound wave, and mm -hmm. they like set it up so you can actually like see it kind of, and how mm -hmm. it's affecting things, mm -hmm. it's moving past. Well, you can't see wind. Mm -hmm. You can't really see sound waves. But you can feel but it. You can <laughs> feel it and you can see the effects of it. Mm -hmm. That's the only way I can explain it is when she belted that, I raise a hallelujah in the mm -hmm. presence of my enemy. It just was like, boom. Mm -hmm. And um, then it was like everything started to go back up. They bust in. I'm watching him. He doesn't change. He doesn't change. When they come in and start messing with him, he actually opened his eyes for a little bit. And then once he like kind of saw what was going on, he shut his eyes back down and went back to that place where he was at. Mm -hmm. We didn't know this until probably about 40 minutes later after they had left. Well, let me say this. Yeah. Tell them. When he got up to where he was supposed to be in the mid-90s, mm -hmm. where all his levels should, should supposed to be, because all these nurses are freaking out and calling and all this. Stuff. But he's rising as we're worshiping. And he's just rising, rising, rising. When he got up to that place, he was healed. Mm -hmm. um, the nurses checked his lungs and said, there's no heart and blood in his lungs anymore. His kidneys started to function again. Mm -mm. They told us, and this is just long story short, they told us we would be in the hospital for a month. And that it would be five months of blood thinners and pig line and... Um, to break up that blood clot and to heal the vein because it's a four to five inch blood clot. And they said, so in six months, he will be back to normal. Um, we were out of the hospital two days later because every single thing uh, started, he was healed. Yeah. But they had to wait for all the test results to come back and make sure and stuff. And then the first time that we got an ultrasound on that blood clot, uh, which was the soonest we could get, it was three weeks later. As soon as they saw, I, and I had to beg the doctor. I said, listen, my son is healed. We don't need to keep taking this medicine. We don't need to do blood thinner shots. Um, I'm telling you, as a mother, I know it's crazy. I know that you said it would be six months because you got to get rid of the blood clot. Then you got to heal the vein. I'm like, but I'm telling you, his, his little bot is not in there. And I'm just asking, will you please check it? Just check it. They got in there and they said, it doesn't look like anything has ever happened in this life. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. No blood clot. Wow. No he needing to heal the vein because mm -hmm. the vein was swollen from having something that big in yeah. it. Nothing. They immediately took him off of all medication. So we were done in this amount of time. And it was supposed to be this amount of time. But in that moment in that hospital room, when heaven touched earth mm -hmm. and, he, and we had that moment of breakthrough, which 
in Second Chronicles, I mean, do you remember when the armies were coming against King Jehoshaphat? And the Lord said, put the, ar- put the worshipers in front of the army. Mm-hmm. And he said, have them sing and rejoice. And, have you seen a worshiper? They're not like fighters, you know? And it's like, put all the wimpy ones in there. I'm just kidding. Worshippers don't have to be wimpy. But they, so they're singing and they're rejoicing. And three armies are coming against them. And while they're worshiping, they don't even see. These three armies turn against each other and they start killing themselves. And then when they get to the top of the hill, getting ready to fight, the battle's already been won. He already took care of it. Mm-hmm. It's not like they were worshiping and watching them all. Just, they, they couldn't see what was happening in the supernatural. Right. We couldn't see what was happening in the supernatural, but what was happening was as we were worshiping, the Lord was completely making him whole. Mm-hmm. And there were more things going on so, in the supernatural So too. that, that <laughs> reference, uh, Second um, Chronicles, 20. Chronicles chapter 20, if you read that whole chapter... Um, those three armies, uh, the Moabs, Mount Seir, and the Amorites, they were coming to destroy the Israelites, God's mm-hmm. people. And King Jehoshaphat declared a fast, so all of them fasted. And he went to the Lord, and the prophet of the Lord came with the word to King Jehoshaphat. And he gave him instruction. And he said, you won't have to fight this battle. I'll fight for you. And I can't remember the exact verse of when he says this. It's more than halfway through that chapter. But he says something very interesting. And, and this is where people lose. They get instruction, and then they, then they wait for the Lord to, to win the battle. But there's one step that people miss. He said... You don't have to fight this battle. I'll fight it for you. Tomorrow, get up and go stand and put the worshipers in front. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you, you start to worship. And I always thought, like, you just told them you're going to fight the battle for them. That They don't have to do anything. Why did you tell them? Why couldn't they just sleep in? Mm -hmm. Why did they have to get up and go position themselves as though they were going to fight? Mm-hmm. Why did they have to do anything at all? And so that's people expect the Lord to do things when they get instruction. And they, again, this goes with the with all through the Word. This is what n- knowing that the Holy Spirit is going to bring peace according to God's Word. He He's faithful to His Word. He mm-hmm. cannot deny Himself. He's not faithful to our emotions. <laughs> he cares about our emotions. Mm-hmm. But he's not faithful to our own opinions. He's not faithful to man's ideas. Mm-hmm. He's faithful to his word. Mm-hmm. That's why we have to consume this word. And so, you know, thinking about, well, the Lord said that, yeah, he's going to fight our battles and stuff for us. Okay. But what is our part? And so we can see in Second Chronicles chapter 20, he said, I'm going to fight this battle for you. Get up tomorrow morning and go stand against the army. That's what it says. It goes, wait a minute. Why would we go stand against the army if you're going to fight? Mm-hmm. And then put the worship leaders up front, and I want you to worship and praise me. And they could not see over. But when they began to worship the Lord, those three armies turned on themselves, and not one of them was left living. Which is interesting because that must have came down to the last two and they must have got each other at the same time. Right. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> or one bled yeah. out or so something. They, they, they come yeah. over then and see the Lord did it. But what what was the in between? Mm-hmm. Him telling them, I will fight for you. Mm-hmm. There was one more instruction. I need you to get up and stand against this. And how I'm going to fight for you is when you worship me. Mm-hmm. This is another thing that I feel like is so important. I kept joy in that hospital room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I kept it. I would put on Cotton Eye Joe and I would dance <laughs> around that room. Yeah. Like I was, I would not let the spirit of death or mm-hmm. fear or, and I kept vision in front of Cash. I'm like, when you go back to school, your friends are going to be so excited to see you and look what's waiting for you. Mm-hmm. And, and your dog is waiting for you. And I'd have London send videos and, and um, even Christmas movies. Cause it, we were in there over Thanksgiving and Christmas movies, 
it was amazing how like there was a tone to the movie we would have to turn some Christmas movies off. Mm-hmm. And you're like, what's wrong with the Christmas movie? Right. Like, Elf was okay because it was, like, joy and funny. And, yeah. But we had to be so sensitive about what we even watched. Um, and he knew it. He could mm-hmm. feel it. His spirit was hypersensitive as well. Let me share the, Let um, me share a word with that, what she just said about keeping the future in front of him. This is Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. <laughs> so... Th- and that's keep that before him. that's that's what the Lord does. Yes. So, you know, the Apostle Paul said, "Imitate me as I imitate Christ." Mm-hmm. He's talking about his revelation and the direct teaching that he had from the Lord Jesus Christ. That hope in that future, when you you're not doing that because you're trying to make something happen, you're doing it because. That's who the Lord is. Mm-hmm. So when you feel like, well, I'm not sure what's going to happen. No, no, you are sure because the Lord said that he's come to give us life. The enemy does this, but because of Jesus's blood, mm-hmm. you, this is obtainable. This abundance of life shall you have. The number of your days you shall fulfill in joy and in peace, mm-hmm. and prosperity and in success and the things that I've called you to do but not for your own glory, for the manifestation of his glory. Mm-hmm. During that time where he was actually, where his vitals were plummeting and he was dying, um, I try to explain it to people as like, I believe that Cash had one one foot in and one foot out. Mm-hmm. Um, Cash tasted heaven in that moment. Oh. Um, he said he felt a bump on the top of his head and he opened his eyes and he could see, he was at the ceiling and he could see all of us um, in the hospital room and he just pushed right up through the ceiling and when he lifted his head he was you know in the galaxies is the best way that I can describe mm-hmm. it and um, we don't go too much which into, is the heavens which is in the heavens and he, he did see the gates of heaven the Bible says there's um, first heaven second heaven third heaven mm-hmm. and but we didn't um, we, we try not to go into too much detail he gives the most amazing details. Um, I try not to go too much into it because I feel like that's his testimony. Yeah. That's his story. And I want him to share those details when he's ready. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will tell you this. Um, the Lord did speak to him. and um, He spoke in Hebrew. He came, <laughs> Cash came back. And when the dust settled, he opened his eyes and let us know. I went up through the ceiling and I talked with the Lord. And he was speaking. We thought he was praying in the spirit, but he kept saying the same three words over and over again. Uh, later, we looked it up. He was speaking Hebrew mm-hmm. for comforter, ta- caretaker, and healer. And he actually mm-hmm. said that the Lord spoke those words, those to, words him. to him. Yeah, it was Hebrew. He said, "I didn't understand what he was saying," but then he said what he was saying in English, and he said, "I knew." That that's what he was saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he told us the words, and we looked them up. They were Hebrew words. Yeah. Wow. See, God, uh, he's the Hebrew God. It's oh, yeah. Yahweh. Mm-hmm. That's a Hebrew name. Mm-hmm. So he's the God of the Hebrews, the Israelites, and so. That's so interesting. I would love to interview oh, him sometime yeah. when he's ready to share yeah. his story. Yeah. That it's, would be amazing. Add on to this. It's amazing. And then um, he doesn't even remember this part, but after he told us what the Lord had said, he remembers. The whole supernatural encounter. Oh, okay. Vividly. Yeah. Um, but he doesn't really remember this part, which Chris recorded it with his phone. He started prophesying, like we had said. And he's saying, like, I, I, the Lord, have called this dream team together. They have not obtained their wisdom through man, but through heaven. I've given them mm-hmm. wisdom to help people. He said they think that they have. Yeah. They think that they learned this at school. And the doctors think that the college and all their preparation is because of their preparation, but he said it's really because of the wisdom of God that they have, yeah. mm-hmm. that they're able to do anything that they do. Yes. So he's like, like prophesying, oh, and we're wow. like, oh my goodness, and you could have cut, <coughs> excuse me, you could have cut the presence of God in that room, like with a knife. We oh, were both yeah. on our knees, crying and thanking the Lord, and this is like one of my favorite parts. I really want to make note of this, just as a mother walking through this. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody just recently asked me, what was God saying to you through all of this? Mm -hmm. Through all of this time, what was God speaking to you? The Lord did not say 
one thing to me from beginning to end. We were led by peace in moments, mm -hmm. and we were grieved thinking about maybe going the wrong way with certain things. But the first time the Lord spoke to me was after we had already got our miracle. I, and like Cash had just told us about his encounter with the Lord, we knew that his lungs were clear, and we knew his body, like, we just got our miracle. And I sat down and I opened my Bible because I felt led to you to Matthew 8, 13. And it's Jesus and the Roman officer. This is the first time that the Lord spoke to me out of the whole eight days. And it says, then Jesus said to the Roman officer, go home because you believed it has happened. And the young servant was healed in that same hour. And that's what I had been saying the whole time. I will take my son home with me. Mm -hmm. My son is going back home. And he says, because you believed it has happened. Mm -hmm. And just like Chris was talking about in Second Chronicles 20, like, it's partnership. The yeah. Lord could have just been like, yeah, sleep in, I got this. But he's like, no, faith is mm -hmm. what pleases God. It's an Only action. believe. Mm -hmm. It's partnership. It's your action saying, like, Lord. And we stood, and we got our miracle. So I guess I would um, encourage your listeners. Um, life does come with impossibilities, right? However, if you want to see the impossible... You have to crucify your flesh to actually take part in the impossible. Your flesh, your mind, will want to go against your spirit. So you have to be spiritually strong. If you, if you want to have an impossible life story, like that doesn't even make sense. Like that's a, that seems impossible. That's a miracle, mm -hmm. right? You, you have to take part in in the impossible, which is deny your flesh and renew your mind to the Word of God. Because mm -hmm. your, your reason, what we see with the facts, your reasoning is going to want to kick in mm -hmm. when you need the Word to kick in. That's why Paul says in Romans chapter 2, or Romans chapter 12, I believe starting in verse 2, uh, don't be conformed to the patterns and the ways of this world or the way the, this world does things, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind according to the Word. Mm -hmm. So I would just say this. To, to have impossible life uh, stories happening, which is you're sharing these with your podcast, which we think is amazing. We love what you're doing. Um, and thank you for having us on. Oh, absolutely. And I want to also... Um, where can people find you? Yeah, so our podcast is... We just changed the name of it, and it is called From Here to Eternity. Our website is cjm.life. I like to say www. <laughs> dot cjm.life. Because she told me, she yeah. said, uh, you don't have to say that anymore. People just say, like, the name and then dot yeah. whatever. And I'm like, well, I mean, no. How will they know? You know? It autofills. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, yeah. I, now it's a joke. Mm -hmm. So it's, it is everybody that's listening and cares. It's www. <laughs> dot cjm.life which the ministry is named chris jacobs ministries right now we we may change it in the future to, um according well, to what we're doing but right. when they're like you need a name for this i'm like oh, okay well it <laughs> is great because i've gotten to sit under you guys both preaching and uh, your anointed singing is just unbelievable and man i wish you could record that song and play it i would just play it all the time <laughs> like but um i would like to ask can you guys pray for the listeners for whatever miracle that they need that they would meet the right people Absolutely. and you know pray a blessing on them and then we will we'll fin finish that way yeah do you want to pray you want me to pray okay. all right father in the name of jesus i thank you that there's no distance in the spirit the time doesn't exist where you're at even though that you have set into motion seed time and harvest and that there are seasons of life that we go through, you said that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. King David had that revelation. And so, Father, I just pray for everybody that's listening, whether they've ever met you or not, whether they've ever called on the name of Jesus and they have uh, right standing with you, or maybe they're hearing this gospel, this good news for the first time. I pray that they would hear that the truth is you never leave 
or forsake any human being. Your word says that you're married to the sinner. Those are people that are far from you. They don't have Jesus. They haven't confessed that he is your son and took their place. He says that you're married to them. I pray that at the sound of my voice and the encouragement of this podcast, Lord, that they would be softened to know and to hear absolute truth, which is Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the way to you in eternal life and heaven is through Jesus. And then also, Father, I pray that people would gather and gain uh, a revelation and understanding that there's nothing that can separate us from your love. We would have to walk away ourselves intentionally. We'd have to turn and say, I, I just won't believe it anymore. I'm walking away. But you're too good. You, there, there, there's nothing that separates us from your love. And so I just would encourage people with that, Lord. And I pray that by the Spirit, they would have uh, an, an unction in their heart to receive your goodness. And uh, we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. And anybody that's sick that's listening to this, I pray by faith that you touch them, heal them of any ailment. Anybody that's being oppressed by the enemy, I pray that you would touch them, send labors across all their paths if they need a touch from you and that they would know that you're good. We love you. We honor you. We give you all the glory, Father, in Jesus' mighty name forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you.